Angela lives on the Richmond public housing estate. She's a single mother of six who's come from South Sudan. She never went to school as a youngster uh, because of the war, which claimed the lives of several of her family members. As you can imagine, her traumatic background really has permeated the rest of her life and uh, has made things very tough. For one, she finds it very difficult to parent her children. Her 15-year-old is currently in juvenile detention. So she's got a lot of barriers to participation in life to life in Australia, to employment, to uh, education, to really everything you can think of. Sadly, her story uh, is not the only one. In the city of Yarra, uh, where we work, the average income is very high, but there are pockets of real disadvantage. Some statistics which may surprise you. The unemployment figure for the whole of the city of Yarra is 5% and on the Richmond and Collingwood housing estates it's 30%. For the people who have less than year 11 level schooling, the figure is 7% for the whole of the city of Yarra and it's 40% on the Richmond and Collingwood estates. 6% Six, uh, 6 of people um, are not fluent in the English language in the whole of the city of Yarra, 35% on the Richmond and Collingwood housing estates. These statistics represent real barriers to individual people, barriers which make it very tough to get by. At Karen Bush, our volunteer program works on breaking down these barriers. Barriers which are caused by maybe the trauma of war, long-term unemployment, cultural differences, uh, little or interrupted schooling. We believe that everybody has the capacity to participate in Australian society fully and to achieve their goals, whatever they may be. So we're an outreach organisation, which means we go to where the people who have the barriers actually live which is on the Richmond and Collingwood housing estates in the main. Uh, there, we work in various ways trying to reach in individual needs. This could be through employment mentoring, or through literacy tutoring, or through support in a variety of ways. People need help with many, many different things. And we look at what individuals need. Really, we fill the gap between existing services and what individual people actually need. So for example, we do deliver English classes which are government funded, uh, but they're heavily regulated as you can imagine, and our teachers don't have the capacity because of all the compliance requirements to meet the needs of every single individual, and some of them are very vulnerable. Uh, for example, Chen. Chen uh, came to us really wanting a job, but he had a few barriers getting in the way of that. Some learning difficulties, uh, his ling English proficiency is low, and probably importantly, he really didn't have a full understanding about the world of getting a job in Australia. Very complicated for, for someone who doesn't know. So through working with one of our volunteers, Robin, um, together they did job interview practice, they, he had a work experience placement organised for him. Uh, he has grown in confidence and he got a job as a kitchen hand, which was his goal. So he was really over the moon when he got that job, we were all pretty thrilled. Um, so that feeling of connectedness really made a difference for, for Chen. Now that outcome is a concrete one, and sometimes we get concrete outcomes like employment or pathway to further training. However, sometimes what we achieve is actually a little bit harder to measure. For example, Michael, he contacted us. He's now in our liter literacy program. He called up when he was feeling a great sense of shame, inadequacy, 
that he was unable to write a message on his daughter's 21st birthday card. Now, through working with a literacy volunteer, his confidence has grown and he, he has a way better sense of self that he, he actually is capable of something and he can move towards something closer to his goals. So the broader community impact of the volunteer program is really quite enormous. Another participant in DIRA, she comes from an oral tradition. She never learned to read or write in her first language. But through working with a literacy tutor, she's now reading books to her young children. And for those kids having a mother who's literate, who knows the importance of books, it's going to make an enormous difference to their, those children's educational outcomes. So, what does Karen Bush need to help this, to make, to make this support happen and to help us to grow the program? $15,000 would allow us to pay our manager of volunteers, Laura, hello, um, <laughs> one day a week for six months. That would allow her to recruit, train and mentor 15 volunteers who would, who would support about 200 people for 400 hours, 4,000 hours, sorry, and that would equate to about $100,000 worth of support. If we got 30,000, we would be able to work with 30 volunteers and double that impact. Carrie Bush is a small and lean organisation, but we think really big in terms of how we can achieve better outcomes for people like Michael and Chen and Angela. Through no fault of their own, a lot of the people we work with have obstacles that are quite enormous just to doing some of the things that we think are, are fairly normal. So your donations really might make a difference at, and, and have an impact on the outcomes for these people. Thank you very much.